Hello everyone and welcome back to another awesome episode of Historical Recreations. Today we'll be creating these chalices, goblets, grails, and cups from five different time periods. Now this is a very special video because it comes on request from a Historical Recreations fan by the name of Leonardo. So I'm dedicating this video to him. Now if you have a request for a prop that you would like to have made, please leave me a comment down below because I read each and every one of them and I might be very happy to create that prop for you. So without further ado, how to create chalices, goblets, grails, and cups today on Historical Recreations. Join me. And welcome back. And today we have a wonderful lineup of materials that you will need to create your chalices, goblets, cups, and even grails. Here are some of the things that you will need to create them. Some clean plastic bottles like this. These are nothing more than orange juice and grape juice bottles. Now, I have chosen different styles of bottles because of the top. You can see that we're going to be using this part as the cup and this part as the foot of our chalices today. Very different styles create very different cups. Today's lineup of colors are a black number 999, a silver number 995, and my rich gold number 997. Now today, minusing the rich gold by using a permanent deep yellow and mixing the silver and black together, you will create an incredible antique gold. Now if you have not seen my tutorials on how to mix faux finishes for metals, I'm going to leave a link down below. There's a link for nine individual and very special faux finishes. You can make your chalices any color. Air dried clay, a very important component today of these chalices and cups today. I'm using a brand called Amos out of South Korea. Love this brand, it is durable. The color here is white, you can use any color you like. Dries within 24 hours. I also picked up these little tiny styrofoam balls to add a little bit of uh, more style to our cups if we want to add something between the foot and the top. You'll need a handy dandy glue gun and lots of glue sticks, a nice soft brush. Today I'm using a 707 series, number three, a Park Buka, and it is for acrylics. And if you really wanted to go medieval and decorative, you can use some of these faux finish diamonds and pearls. Now I also have another tutorial video on how to change the colors of these diamonds. If you want to learn it, I'll leave a link in down below. And for those people who have been to Europe and have seen the chalices in the museums and churches, they often use pearls in their metalwork. Everything else is in the tutorial. The first thing we want to do in our project is take off this part of the plastic bottle and also remove the base. Now, when doing any of these types of projects, be very, very careful. Knives and other instruments are very sharp, so be careful when you, I always tell everyone in all of my projects and stuff like this, safety first. So removing this and then we're going to create our goblets. So let's take off the tops and let's take off the bottoms. Very easy way of taking the top and the base off. You can use a tiny hacksaw like this with very, very, very fine teeth on it and also a very powerful pair of uh, scissors like this. These are industrial scissors. Uh, these are not normal house scissors. They are a grade above them. You can actually cut uh, things like um, food products and other things like that. So I'm going to just demonstrate today. See, I started making, I have also a towel down. I made a little groove. Hold the bottle very firmly. Make a little groove. Okay, once you make a little groove, you can put your scissors, oops, sorry about that, scissors right in here and the plastic will cut very nicely. Keeping your fingers away and using common sense. Look at that, the top of the bottle popped right off like that. So now we have the top part, which is hanging by a little thread here. There it is, as you can see I did the other ones. Now with this, you can just very easily, very slowly cut and, as you can see, very carefully go around with these industrial scissors.
and you have a base. Very, very easy. Just throw away the, the other parts. So now with that, we can actually cut this these down to size because you can see what we're going to do today here. We're going to make goblets. So let's now trim these little guys down to size. We're going to make them um, basically down to where we want them for the, the feet of our goblets. We have two left. Now, as you can see, I had trimmed them down. The, uh, the shape of the bottle is already there to create the base. And you just very carefully go and trim off the base. Just one part. Let's go a little bit lower. Always be careful what you're doing. Watch what you're doing. is a very very nice base so when we put these two together you can already see the shape of the goblet taking form so let's finish the last one now and we can start building we're going into the stretch what I did was I gave them a light wash in the sink to make sure that all the particles were missing we got our bases set up and I got my hot glue gun warming up and we also have some little styrofoam balls here now I took off one of the caps here to show you how beautifully that goes on there and how beautiful the base would go on there for a little bit more designs. We can hot glue some of these together. Now with these, um, showing off the different styles of goblets that we can create, um, we want to make one that's kind of medieval and we can probably do one that's kind of gothic here. And Now the reason why we would make these is for a theatrical or something to do with say cosplay where you really want something decorative. Now the best part of is that if you had something like this and it fell off the table during a performance, believe it or not, it's going to be very, very soft sound. So it's going to like that. But just imagine if you used a real glass during a performance instead. So that's going to make a major difference. So now the hot glue gun is warming up, let's wait and we're going to start assembling these. Just finished one of them, I put the styrofoam ball in there, it looks really great. Okay, so that's, kind of, that's just so cool, huh? Just instant goblet. Um, so let's like do some more over here and let's see what we can match up. Um, we do want a shorter one, we want one that's a little bit more shorter. I think that's going to work very well. How about on this base, which one do I like better? Hmm. I like the simple with the simple. That's a really good. I'm going to tighten that up. Put my hot glue on here. Okay, enough. Very generously. And put that right on its new base. Look at that. We're just going to create a whole bunch of unique goblets. I mean, that just instantly. Now we have two really cool unique goblets wowzers just look at that i mean just maybe if you just wanted them to be uh clear on stage you could just have this but you'd probably ask me how would you get rid of that well you would paint these a silver gray uh, you can mix up one part white with a silver and you can actually faux finish this to make it look like it is a part of the glass and you could just make that disappear maybe I'll do one for a demonstration here uh, but let's make some metal goblets today I am very excited at how these came out really nice huh all right and I like to even put some gemstones on this one because this one looks like it would be medieval okay let's decorate now, with this medieval style one, I'm going to be using our air dry clay today to add some decoration and to masquerade some areas of around the base to add a form or a shape to it. Let's add into the shape of the glass. Now once I get this finished, I'm going to show you what it's going to look like to the shape of the glass. So let's now let this one dry for 24 hours and let's work on another one. Okay, so let's also we have here this one. Hmm. I think that one is pretty decent. Let's add some more clay to around here. 
And I have chosen our first vessel here to paint up. Uh, the air dry clay has dried 24 hours. I'm using a mixture today of a silver number 995 acrylic and a 999 black, just a dash. And we're going to be using the permanent yellow deep. And we're going to make an antique gold, which is going to knock your socks off with this one. So let's now do this. Okay, let's mix up our, our silver. Okay, and a black. We're just going to use just a dot of black. This sol it solidifies. This little chunk that just popped in there. That's okay. That's all we need right there. And I see the ratio like that. It is 90% silver and a little tiny dot of mix these together in a very special ratio. Let me show you this. Working in for our silver, bringing in our Ah, oh, that's a beautiful color right there. Uh, working in with our golds, we're gonna be creating a very unique gold and using a little bit of the black here. Oh man, that is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful antique. Our, our chalice here, because we're using we're going through transparency. So let me finish this completely. You're gonna see how good this is gonna look. This is gonna look so awesome when it's done. Um, we're going to put several layers on here, inside and outside of the cup. And when it's done, I'll show you what it looks like. And here it how it came out. Check out that beautiful medieval gold. Now, you can, like I said before, you can't get this out of a tube, so you have to mix it. And of course, I gave you the measurements. I have two things to point out. The first thing is I left the edge of the lip of the cup rough on purpose because if we're looking at something that is 400 years old well it's not going to be 21st century made in a factory perfect hand forged handmade it's all going to have flaws in it and people notice that stuff so the unevenness of the lip where i had cut it that's exactly what i wanted and then also the interior is a slightly darkened color of the external color so basically I had used the antique medieval gold plus a little bit more black to darken the interior to get rid of the transparency well over to my right we have gemstones and other materials which we'll be adding with the air dry clay to create findings to put around here for decorative purposes but we're gonna do that a little bit later let's move on to our next cup For our next cup, I had a very difficult time figuring out if I wanted this to be wood, to make like a holy grail. Uh, for that purposes, you would do this with the burnt umber and then you could faux finish the wood on here. That would be very easy to do. Now, if you wanted to create this in a metal finish, which is what my tutorial is all about today, we're gonna go back into the 9995 uh, here, silver. And we're going to add another dot of black. And we're going to create a pewter finish. I think that's actually a little bit too much black. But we're going to see how this comes out. We always want to work our darkest darks into our lightest lights and see what kind of color, what color goes on there. Yes, that is what we're looking for. We're going to be doing an aging process at the end of the tutorial to show you how you can create uh, all of these vessels much 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 more antique looking but let's apply this pewter finish on here and i will show you what it looks like when it is done and don't forget to do the interior we want to get rid of the transparency today we're going to use a very light shade of gold. So today I'm going to demonstrate we're going to be using a 9995. We're also going to be using a titanium white number 901 and we're going to be going back into our permanent yellow deep number 605. So let's mix that color up right. Okay. So we have a larger amount of silver, a bit of our permanent yellow deep and let's blend that again we're going to go in from our our silver from our lightest into our dark silvery gold okay so now let's paint our vessel down now i'm continuously 
painting this down and layering it up with more and more of this color. Now, if you like this color just the way it looks, because it has that 1700s kind of a new brass look to it, like a candlestick would have, that's great. You would consider it done, and that would be the project itself. However, we are going to age this a little bit later. I'm going to show you a great technique on how to put some corrosion on this to make this really, really, really old. Now that our goblet is completely dry, let's put on a second coating and bring this goblet to life. Today I'm using a gold number 997, which is a rich gold, and I'm also using an alpha black number 999, and a color that's a little bit hard to find. It is an emerald green Nova, which is a 946, but you can actually mix this color up quite easily. I also have my small container of water over here and a mixing dish. Let's now start putting the aging process on this and let's corrode this up a little. Now I have out my rich gold over here. Let's mix this up a little bit. Oh, that's very nice. It's been sitting in the container for some time. And we're going to go into our black and try to contaminate that a bit and make it more darker. We want to really dull this gold down. That's our main purpose. And then we're going to be using the color over here, which is a green, to make a patina. So that is a really good color now to create. And let's paint. I'm going to add a little bit more water. And let's now paint our vessel. Oh yeah, so nice that. Just drag it on down, information down. Get into the grooves. You want to leave a little bit of that color underneath there to come through. Add a little bit more water. There we go. And let me finish this up and then I'm going to show you what it looks like when it is done. I'm very excited to show you that I'm dipping right back in to the patina green. I'm adding very small amounts of the green in anything that has a crevice in it to give it the patina finish on it. And don't be afraid to add some water. Streak it down, blend it, let it drip. It looks, the base is amazing because it looks just like a candle holder from the uh, 1700s. Really, really good mixture of color there. And once you get that set, let that dry and then you can do the interior. historical recreations, I usually like to save the best for last. And this one glass we have here really has stand out to me and I thought you know what instead of just doing a metal finish on this one I'm going to demonstrate something really incredible we're going to do the metal finish from the base down so it is half metal with a glass okay the first thing we want to do is we want to put out our white glue and you're going to want to put a lot of it out there not just a little tiny bit because you cannot remix the color this is a very important detail. Um, if you do not have enough or did not make enough, uh, very, very hard to remix the color exactly. The brand of glue I'm using today is Amos, which you can use any glue like Elmer's white. And we're going in with two drops of red. And I'm going in with two drops of blue reading and I also must inform you that it will be transparent. Do not add any water to this whatsoever. Okay. Blend well. Very well. I believe we are at the right stage. Okay, so let's now start painting the glass. Okay. Apply in one generous streak and blend. Yes, all right, nicely done. 
Okay, let's let this dry. Pour and look to it. So let's mix up the base color today. We're going back into our rich gold, which I'm gonna mix up in the bottle. And I'm gonna be careful this time because the last time I poured it all over myself. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put just enough in there. Okay, and then, and that's, that's being pretty honest, you know? <laughs> Prop makers make big messes too. And just a dab of black. Um, we want the gold color to come through, but we also want the gothic feel to it. So we are just going to mix up a very nice, dark, dark, dark. Love how beautiful this came out. And for the icing on the cake, we're not going to leave the rim like it is. We are going right into our pure gold and I'm loading up the brush and we are going to do the edge decoration and everything up to it but I'm keeping it very very basic okay so let's let this dry the lineup of color today is silver number 995 you'll be also using the black number 999 and blue gray number 962 this is nothing more than a blue with a little bit of uh, black and white and maybe even silver mixed in with it and then also my favorite color of all my colors in my collection which is the 925 burnt umber now if you don't have these two colors you can always mix them yeah. and there we have a beautiful color and just following oh yeah it looks like a witch's cauldron actually <laughs> the day. let me finish this off and then i'll show you what it looks like only a few moments ago, I had a plastic container, and now I have this beautiful metal cup. I just love, 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 love this color. Earlier we had created our, I guess you can kind of say it's our King's Goblet. And I'm going to show you today how to apply the gemstones uh, in uh, kind of bindings. You're going to take some of your air dried clay and you are going to create a finding. Now, don't be afraid to stick this right to a piece of paper because it's going to fuse this paper. It's going to dry on there. Choose the gemstone that you like and so many different ways that you can create gemstones and purchase gemstones. This red one is really calling my name. It's kind of a ruby. I'm going to stick that right in there like this. You have created a finding. Now, I would probably suggest taking a small tool and adding some texture or some type of design adding some texture a little bit of a design to your finding like this with the tool you have created a beautiful piece that will dry we're going to paint this later gold and we're going to attach I get to show you a close-up view of what we had done here for our our cup and I had made some of the findings and chosen appropriate color stones that I thought the aquamarine would be something of the medieval times the ruby the amethyst stone the amber stone over here um, and the came out beautiful as I put the gold paint around all of them I got the hot glue gun warming up so here's my tweezers and we're going to attach them to our cup Okay, so I put a little bit of our black into our tray. tray. Okay, I'm charging up my brush over here. And we're going to create a slurry. And your slurry should be about maybe one to three. So that's very important to have. And when you're doing this, you're going to yeah, and any of the metal working. And this corrosion will drip into all the facets you just let this air dry and we're going to do this now to the 
the cups except for the amethyst goblet and I will explain what we're going to do on that. And right now four of the goblets have the coating on them and do they look magnificent. Um, one small thing I need to share with you that these goblets will be going in a fall exhibition in a gallery and I'm going back in here to do our last vam vampire style goblet. I am only going to do the gold and the reason is we do not want to apply the wash to the glass part. Reason is water will affect the glue and food coloring mixture that we had done. So once I age this last piece, let's let this dry and we're going to inspect them all. And here they are, five different chalices, cups, grails, and goblets set out for your display, for your final approval. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode of Historical Recreations, Gothically Yours, Professor M. <laughs>